these adjustments that I'm gonna show you guys are really with Madden 24 in mind, but Madden 23 and Madden 24 really aren't that different. The one that I really do find myself changing a lot is auto alignment. That to me is huge, because when I was playing Madden 24, I noticed a lot of people had their auto alignment to base. For the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Snip the Mad Cheese, as always. Got an updated coaching adjustments video for you guys today. I know that this is one of the most asked questions when it comes to my comment section, and it appears to be that way when it comes to Google searches. So I try to put out updated versions a couple of times a year, and I haven't put one out in a couple of months. I have a couple of new ones in this video as well, with my attention looking forward to Madden 24, which I'll mention as the video continues. Other than that, though, if you guys want me to continue this series, as always, please make Make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, and let me know in the comment section, as it'll be probably one of the first videos I put out when Madden 24 drops as well. Other than that, let's go and get right into the video. Now, I'm starting off on offense, and this is something that I'm not going to go over each individual one of these because the only one I ever use on offense is ball carrier. Every single game, I'm, I'm a very turnover-focused uh, player. I want to limit my turnovers at all costs because that's, to me, one of the biggest ways to win games. So I pretty much always put my ball carrier to conservative because this basically makes it to the point where nobody fumbles the ball at all. Running backs, you don't fumble the ball. You don't have to worry about hitting the uh, the ball, the button to protect uh, the ball, which is is I think RB or LB. I'm not even sure because, like I said, I don't even really use it. It's either R1 or L1. I don't, you know, I probably do it like, you know, from habit, but I know I don't have to. Even if I'm running with the quarterback, which quarterbacks have a much higher chance of fumbling, if I set my ball carry to conservative, I don't have to worry about that because you never fumble when you set to conservative. It's an absolute cheat code. I recommend doing it at pretty much every time the second the game starts. You can set this adjustment before, the, you know, the opening kick return, and you'll, you'll, you know, if some people like to kick to the fullback and try to make your fullback fumble. I know I do that from time to time. If you set this to conservative, no player will fumble. Not quarterbacks, not running backs, not receivers, which also fumble a lot. So to me, this is the most important one when it comes to offense. All the other ones I leave alone because I don't think they really help at all. All. If you're in a situation though where it's like a fourth and one and you have to pick up a first down or your fourth and goal or something like that from the one or something like that, any situation where you need to get a little bit more, uh, you know, you're going to run for the try to run for a situation, setting the ball carrier too aggressive might be helpful in that situation, but you also increase your chance of fumbling. So I wouldn't keep it on there for very long. Switching over to the defensive side, these adjustments that I'm going to show you guys are really with Madden 24 in mind, but Madden 23 and Madden 24 really aren't that different. Madden 20 and Madden 24 really aren't that different. Let's be honest, it's really just tweaked from year to year rather than like a whole new video game. So basically, um, there's a couple new adjustments here that I really found myself using a lot or just kind of messing around with. One of the ones that I was messing around with was the auto flip. And that was based off of the fact that in Man 24, I was running a lot of Man Zero Blitzes. And I really felt like the auto flip was kind of putting guys out of position. So that's something that I'm not all the way 100% to the point where I want to say turn it off yet. But keep that in mind. That's something that with the first scheme, especially that I'm going to put out, which is going to be probably my most used defense in Madden 24, uh, I was really having a lot of success with, with disabling this because a lot of the man alignments just weren't correct. The one that I really do find myself changing a lot is auto alignment. I was, I'm to the point now where I set my auto alignment to base every single time. And I'll show you guys why. This really depends on what defense you run. If you run like man cover two, which is something that I, I had a lot of success with in Madden 23, it's not a good idea to base a line. And I'll show you guys why. Pretty much only man cover two, I'd say it's the only defense that you don't want to do this in. And that's because man cover two is heavily reliant on the ability to press receivers. If you come out in a man, if you come out with your defense set like this, number one, you can see, I mean, I know I picked a three wide receiver set, but you can see how far back the cornerbacks are. And if I run the play, they really don't have the opportunity to press, which is pretty much the number one thing when it comes to man coverage. You can see everybody gets open. But every other defense is just as effective. So basically, to me, it's worth it to have it in base so that your opponent can't read the defense. Because the one of the first things I'm going to put out is a cover four and a man zero blitz type of scheme anyway. 
and it's very effective basically running it exactly like i'm showing you here so keep that in mind i find that uh, that's something that i really missed the boat on probably throughout all of man 23. I, I think that's something everybody's gonna be doing everybody's gonna be because when i was playing man 24 i noticed a lot of people had their auto alignment to base when i was playing them as well so that to me is huge i think that's a huge advantage and something that i've never recommended in a coaching adjustments video after that a lot of these other coaching adjustments i definitely have uh, recommended not a lot's going to change after this so if you've already seen my coaching adjustments video you can probably guess um, what the rest of these going to be now i'm going to go i'm just going to go through it quick because um, like i said they're pretty much the same from here out ball in the air defense i pretty much always put that to either play ball or play receiver let me know in the comment section which one you guys like better i find that playing receiver earlier on in the year got a lot more knockouts than it does now and playing ball early in the year um felt kind of the same to, to playing receiver felt like i had the same amount of interceptions where i've noticed recently if you don't have play ball on it feels like you don't get nearly as many interceptions so to me i always go with play ball because i definitely want to um try to get more interceptions uh, than, than knocking the ball out. I want I want to get the ball. To me, turnovers is key. I said on offense, I want to reduce my turnovers. On defense, I want to get more turnovers. So I typically go play ball. Cornerback matchups, it really depends on who I'm playing. This never really changes. I pretty much always just put it to um, to buy depth or to buy overall because your best cornerbacks are going to do best against the best receivers. If it's a speed disadvantage, though, if you're going against Tyree Kill or something like that, I'll typically go by speed. And if you're going against a really tall receiver like uh, Mike Evans or something like that, who's you know really good at just mossing people I can, I, sometimes i'll go by height it really you know there's some caveats there but for the most part i go by by overall option defense you always want to go conservative you always want to focus on the quarterback because the, the running back can only do so much while the quarterback if he's left uncovered he's usually going to be a very big play so i pretty much always said that the conservative they said we have strip ball and tackling which are both pretty much the same with the exception of um the penalty you get if you put on aggressive if you put this on uh, if you put strip ball on aggressive you have a much higher chance of face mask penalties and they will happen so i always leave that alone but tackling there really is no downside to putting that to uh to conservative where i really just want to make sure that um my guys just tackle if you put it on aggressive you'll you'll probably you, you, number one you don't won't get a lot more fumbles anyway even though you'll get more hit stick attempts from the ai you don't really get that much more fumbles so to me aggressive doesn't make a lot of sense i typically put aggressive or conservative because i just want to make sure that they make the tackle when they get there and then last but not least we got zone drops which i always set to five if i think i want to use hard flats as a pass defense or zero if i want to use it as a run defense because at zero they won't leave the line of scrimmage and they'll fight for that spot the line of scrimmage where basically it's just going to make it more effective against run plays. so it's really up to you or what your opponent's doing rather but i pretty much always put it at five to start the game and then if i notice i have a, a high you know a guy that runs the ball a lot i'll typically set it to to zero to try to take that away uh, when it comes to curl flats i pretty much always have it at 15 sometimes i'll go to 20 depending on what routes my opponent's using but it's pretty much always set to 15 to start because i feel that this is the most effective against the most routes at about a 15 yard depth and then last but not least this is something i get a lot of people uh controversially saying in my comments they say that uh if i set my zone coverage to match and I have some, uh, I have my curl flats or my flats set to 15 that it overrides the matching coverage anyway, which I don't necessarily know if it, that's true. I kind of just do it as a habit because if th there are ways, like you can reset your zone drops. You can just basically play sticks in the middle of a play. So if you're in a situation where you're using a, a cover four and you want to use like a stock cover four, you can basically just, you know, play sticks and it'll go back to stock zone coverage. But if you don't have your zone coverage set to match, you won't get the full benefit of a matching coverage anyway so to me there's there's multiple ways to look at it yeah i know that setting your curl flats and your flats will um, override zone coverage match it but you want it that you want that at your disposal you want to have the option to play match at any point in time and you won't get that unless you set your zone coverage to match so that's part of the reason i do it another part of the reason i do it like i said it's partly habit where I'm not 100% sure if the deep zone coverages react better when you have your zone coverage set to match. I've had people in my comment section saying that it doesn't matter, but I'm not 100% sure if that's true. So to me, I always set it to match anyway, just for, you know, just in case I need it, because you don't, if you run a match coverage, you don't get the, the full benefit unless you do that regardless. So if that's, that's the video. If you guys want to see more, let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bits and more. Link in the description below.